let's get a preview of Creighton. And this is how, if I were a head coach at a place like Creighton, I would build a basketball program. I would have one big man underneath because I know that I can't get what I call the Scotty Pippins of the world, the long guys, the positionalist players. They're all over the place nowadays. But at a place like Creighton, you're not going to be able to get four or five of those guys at a time to compete with the upper echelon college basketball team. So I want a big dude, hopefully that can score, which they kind of sort of have. And then I want a bunch of three-point shooters. And that's exactly what they are. If you look uh, down in the paint, the front court, it's seven foot one, 270-pound Ryan Cockbrenner. Cockbrenner? Barely knew her. Uh, Cockbrenner is uh, a defensive force. He's going to be really good. They're going to try to play the perimeter, funnel you down low. So Tennessee's going to have to be smart with the basketball. I think they're going to have to make some mid-range jumpers, as a matter of fact, which we never say anymore. And then along the outside, they've got a bunch of guys who can hit threes. The thing is, they're not deep really at all. And I believe Tennessee uh, should be a much more athletic than Creighton, although Cockbrenner will provide a challenge. Uh, there just aren't that many players as big as him in college basketball but ultimately i think top to bottom tennessee has a better team than creighton and i i really don't think it's that incredibly close you no i don't think it's that close either they're gonna have to um you are gonna find me crazy after the way i've criticized him over the past but honestly this is the type of game where rick barnes would do well to give john calipari a call and the reason I say that is the dribble drive would work perfect, perfect in this game, because every time you slot, you're right. These they're going to have their unathletic guards play the perimeter really, really, really aggressively. And then they're going to rely on Cockburner down low if they get past it to try to drive to the basket. If you do the dribble drive and just keep kicking out every time you get to the basket, you will have beaten them and you'll leave a lane open for three behind you because they're going to try to stay with you the whole time. And they're not going to be able to recover to get back to block any shots from the three point line. So I would actually say, I mean, could you imagine just Zakai Ziegler driving to the basket every single time he's going to kick it out and someone's going to be open every time he does that. And yeah. so I would do that. I would play small. And if I'm Rick Barnes, I would, I'd literally go, Nolan Richardson, 1994, 40 minutes of hell. I'd press the whole game. I wouldn't have a problem with that, and they can do that. I, I actually really like that idea. Um, and as far as creating points, yes, dribble drive would be a way to go, but they're not going to make some sort of massive change. And we all know Dalton Connect can kind of dribble drive on himself and create his own shot. So... No, it wouldn't be and Dalton I, anyway. He's not athletic enough. It'd be Sakai dribble driving and even Josiah. You don't think Dalton connects athletic enough? Dribble drive, you have to be uniquely more athletic than the person quicker, uniquely quicker than the person in front of you. So oh, that's I why I think he's quicker than the person ahead of him every almost every game. Because he's, I think he's, he's going against the three. He's not going against the two. True. That's a fair point. You're right. And they have, but I, I think usually in this motion offense, Dalton connect typically is able to get to the right spot on the court, but I don't really see him beat guys off the dribble going to the basket a lot. Um, that much. I haven't seen a lot of that this year. Um, no, I guess sometimes they overplay him and I've, I've seen him get there. I, maybe I think he's a little bit more, uh, athletic than you. Nevertheless, um, what do you think of the matchup just in general? I mean, I'm with you. It's it's a little bit of a tricky matchup because of how because of the interior, and they will have to rely on the mid range with the high low. I think they can do it because what you might end up doing is pulling Adu a little bit away from the basket and have him kind of hit some of those 15 footers. You know what I mean? And uh, Adu and Josiah, if you have if you have Josiah, this actually could be a big game for Josiah. Whereas if he can hit some 15 footers right there, like at the free throw line a lot, then you could really have a good game. Uh, plan going forward. Now you you've told me before that you thought uh, Jonas Adu was the most important player on this team, game in and game game out. What about this matchup? Is he still numero numero 
uh, number one most important player brought to you by Sports Treasures, carrying over 5 million sports treasures and so much more. Follow on Facebook for the best in sports memorabilia daily updates at Sports Treasures TN, Sports Treasures TN. So let me ask you that. What do you, what do you think when I pose that query to you? I mean, I would like to say he should be the most important player, but I think um, Ryan Cockburner is the type of player that will just totally negate him. Jonas Ado is soft. I have to say that. He's soft. And Cockburner will work him and I I think is going to mentally wreck him. I'm sorry. I don't have faith in Jonas Ado to actually win those battles underneath the basket. Okay, well then, then who's the most important player? Is it as simple as Connect? It's Connect. Connect's just got to score a lot. This is they need like a forty-five point game from and and Ziegler, Connect and Ziegler together, um, and James just not, because because of Creighton's interior, James is going to have to do a lot of a lot of offense in this game that he usually doesn't do. Okay, what would you like to see out of Connect if he's suddenly the most important player instead of Adu? I want to see Connect do what I actually just brought up with James. I think Connect should catch a lot. Should um, they should work to get Connect the ball at the free throw line a lot of times, and then he can have a little bit to work with, determine if he wants to try to drive and go up against golf runners, or there should be somebody open. I mean, Connect's actually an underrated passer. A lot of people don't really notice that about him because he scores so much, but you can't really trap him. He almost always finds the open guy. So I want to see connect, get the ball at the free throw line. And I want to see what they can do with him there. I think Josiah is going to have to somewhat be underneath the basket because Creighton actually runs uh, Baylor Shearman, who is their leading scorer. their are six, six guard. They play him down low a lot. I mean, he's averaging nine rebounds a game and Josiah is going to be responsible for pulling him away from the basket. Josiah can't pull him away from the basket unless Josiah hits a couple of threes. Um. Uh, yeah. So, who would be your top four most important players? I'm gonna go connect Ziegler. I'm gonna go Adu. You know, maybe now the flip side of him not being as big and as physical as the Purdue big man, uh, Cockbrenner, is he's gonna be able to get down the field or down the court a lot faster. So he could get a few give me points just from being more athletic and did, getting down the court. So I, I am going to go connect uh, Ziegler uh, Jonas. And who else do you want on there? Who's the most important player versus Creighton? Connect Ziegler. Oh, Josiah, Josiah. Okay. All right. So and that's why this is where you're right. This is where Josiah, this is where the defense should really step up. They need to force turnovers all game long if they can. I mean, they, this is why I mean they need to press and play transition basketball. I mean, we need to see Bruce Pearl 2006. 